And that created an incredible amount of pain in my mind that I could clearly feel of, of not being proud of myself in the future. And that meant when I then compared the two options of staying where I was and leading to that pain versus starting a new job, it became easy. The easier path, the less painful path was to go after my, you know, my dreams. But then beginning that journey towards owning your, your business for the first time must have been pretty daunting because you'd never run a business before, right? So how did that feel? 100%. Yeah, just incredibly daunting, really. I had no direct role models around me in my life, no family or friends that were entrepreneurial. So there's nobody to look at and really model and go after in my immediate vicinity. So that leads to feeling obviously daunted by the, the challenge. But these lessons that I was learning was that you have to go after it in life. It's not going to be given to you. If I carried on passively like I was, like passively getting jobs that were sort of given to me or it looked like that was the right thing to do, if I carried on in that way, I was never going to get to where I wanted to get to. Um, but what I realized I had to do for myself to get over that feeling of, of being daunted by the challenge ahead was to create a mental pain for myself. I think we, we would try and run away from pain a lot, but actually we can use pain to our advantage if it's used in the right way. So for me, when I was looking at my options of staying where I was versus starting a business that I've got no experience of and nobody around me had done, it was easy if you look at it you know, at, at the periphery that the going after a new job is the more scary route because I had a you know, cushy nine to five, I had a salary, uh, you know, I, I was looked after, I had some savings. You have to really dive in to, to give yourself the motivation to go after something that's more uncomfortable. So I had to create that mentally for myself. You, know, you hear about some people's stories where they literally get ground down to having nothing. So they don't need to create any mental pain because they've already got a lot of pain in their life already that spurs them on to success. But because I didn't have that, I had a you know mediocre, it was this comfortable mediocrity that I had. I had to create a mental pain. So the way I did that was to visualize myself in 40, 50 years time, uh, or even five years time, looking back at myself, not being proud of how I'd spent my time. Um, and I made, and I visualized that, I used paper to write this down visualize exactly how disappointed I'd be if that's where my life got to and that created an incredible amount of pain in my mind that I could clearly feel of, of not being proud of myself in the future and that meant when I then compared the two options of staying where I was and leading to that pain versus starting a new job it became easy the easier path the less painful path was to go after my you know my dreams and start an entrepreneurial business and that became a lot less daunting then than staying down the same road. So I had to create that um, and, and that really was a lot of motivation for me to go after what I wanted to do. Um, and another thing that happened around that time, which I want to mention as well, because as I reflect on my story, I, I know there are a few pivotal moments. And around that time in my life, I was, I was only young still and I, uh, I lost my dog in a, in a road accident, tragic road accident. And she was only two years old and it was, a, it was horrible. I, I was there at the time. I was with her when she, when she passed away and um, really difficult time. It's still difficult to think about and talk about now. But again, a very formative experience to go through at a young age because you realize that life can be cut short and you do only get one chance. That was my first experience of loss and I had that at a young age. And the lessons it taught me have been incredibly valuable to this day. So her character anyone that has a dog knows that dogs have their own personalities and and she was somebody you know a dog not a person but she 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 her character was really full of life full of energy you know enjoying every day just present in the moment and to see that taken away at just 2 years old much before her time was was really hard for me at a young age to go through so looking back at it again it you can see the lessons that come from this it taught me that you get one life you don't know how short it can be and now I've really formed a strong opinion that we really have to make the most of this one life that we that we get given. Yeah, that's really, really powerful. And, and hearing how much that impacted you and what you took from it as well, I think. It's just credit to you for, you know, some people would just become extremely angry about an event like that or, you know, hold real resentment. But again, you used it to your advantage. You used that and, you know, you, you fondly remember your dog's personality to this day. But I think the most important lesson that, that could have come from that sunk in, you know, so it wasn't in vain. And, and you believe and realize now that you do have one life and 
you got to make the most of it. You know, you got to like it can it could be cut short at any moment. So absolutely, I think certainly growing up, like you say, having no business or entrepreneurial role models, if you're just taking that passive approach, like you say, and just waiting to be handed the opportunity to go and live the life that you want, it's often not going to happen. And so I think the most dangerous to pl- place to be is in the middle, isn't it? It's that tolerable mediocrity. If you're at rock bottom, like you say, and you've got a horrific set of circumstances and you like you have that fire to escape it, sometimes that's the most advantageous thing you can have to spur you on. But when you don't have that, you have to sometimes just create that in yourself. And so creating that mental pain and visualizing your regret in advance of like looking back on what your life could look like and how you'll think back and think, did I waste those opportunities? Did I not live that one life that I had to its fullest potential? Such a fascinating way of thinking. And I think it's it's testament to where you're at today. So it's it's fantastic. I mean, how did you go from that position, right? So you, you kind of made those realizations. You realized you only have one life. You want to make the most of it. How'd you go from that position to starting your first business? Like you must've faced some fairly big obstacles early on to get started. Yeah, hundred percent. So in the, these lessons were teaching me a lot about how I viewed my life and the values that I was creating at the time. And hundred percent, I decided that I was going to start a business. I knew from the very start, it was going to be full of ups and downs and it didn't disappoint. It was certainly full of ups and downs, which we'll go into, but it all makes the journey a lot more worthwhile in, in the long run. So, um, yeah, so at that point, you know, I got to this realization, I'd got these really strong beliefs about needing to make the most of my life, um, not wanting to waste my potential, realizing that you get out what you put in, those sort of things were going around my mind. Um, and then I had that mental pain of staying where I was and it all led to searching for businesses that I could run and I could create for myself. And remember, I'd also realize what success meant to me so success was freedom so when I was looking at what opportunities could I take on to get myself to that success they had to be opportunities that led to freedom and so you're presented with we're lucky we're very fortunate in in this year and today's day and age there are lots of opportunities when you search for which businesses to start so you have to have a bit of a filter of what type of businesses you want to start so for me, the filters for me was that I needed to be a small initial financial investment, uh, you know, just a few thousand pounds I had in savings. You know, it needed to be no previous business experience required. As I say, I had no experience in a job that couldn't be further away from uh, an e-commerce business. And I also needed it to be scalable so I could reach all of my lifestyle goals that I had for myself. So that's how I got drawn to online business, firstly, because then you can make money from wherever you are in the world. And I had that bug from not finishing my traveling trip. And then from online business, I then got into realizing that e-commerce and it's it's presented to you as drop shipping, it was the best opportunity for me. So selling physical products meant that I could do it all from a laptop and it would be a, a business that runs without the necessity of my time. But, you know, because there are other online businesses that are very dependent on your time. You could be a freelancer on Upwork and Fiverr. You could do that, of course, from anywhere in the world. But if you stop working, you stop earning. So instead, I needed to get into a running a business that was com- going to be completely de- independent of my time. So that way I could have the freedom and the success that I was looking for. So they're like absolutely set. Dropshipping, e-commerce businesses, that's for me. Uh, and I started with the typical naive start into the world of, of e-commerce. And I started with traditional dropshipping, which is not what we, what we do now, Lewis. And that was selling cheap products that come from AliExpress or Alibaba. They're on the other side of the world, often in China. So it's like three or four week delivery time. And what that led to was lots of of, uh, of obstacles and upset straight away. You know, the, the obstacles came thick and fast initially. I had returns to deal with. I had difficult supplier communication. You know, the products were poor quality. The, the you know, impatient customers because delivery, to be fair, was three or four weeks. The main obstacle, though, out of all this that put it all to an end was that ultimately it wasn't a profitable business for me. I was investing more money in Facebook ads that that I was making back in sales. So that put it all to an end. So I realized that I needed to pivot. This wasn't the right model for me. And it stung. You know, I'd lost I'd lost like hundreds of pounds into the thousands of of, of spending in this venture. And I realized it I was going down the wrong path the whole time. So I knew that I had to pivot. I wasn't going to give up that easily. I learned a lot of lessons from doing that, you know, but, but I knew that I would, I would find a way. I knew there would be a way and I knew that I would find out what that way is. 
So from that initial upset, knowing that I had to pivot, but knowing that I was onto something, I then came across Dropship Unlocked, Lewis, and it was your face that came up on the, on the YouTube ads. And suddenly all of the issues that I could see and was experiencing with the type of business that I was growing at the time were answered by the, the home turf advantage model that you that you pre- presented and you brought to, to me. Suddenly I could see how I could sell products online, but there's going to be good supplier communication, high quality products, fast delivery, and it was going to be a much more simple, you know, not easy, but more simple business to run. And it still had all of the benefits of e-commerce. So that's when I got started you know, a few weeks later with Dropship Unlocked. Started my, my business a, a couple of months after getting into Dropship Unlocked. And then I was making high ticket sales to UK customers. Um, and that was the start of you know, its history from there, really. Yeah, what a journey. It's fascinating. And we should probably mention as well that you're obviously now a member of the team as well. You work with us as a client success coach and got a successful business or multiple businesses now. It's fascinating to hear the journey that you took. 